Hello guys, welcome to another section of learning with Prep Class. I am Tutor Chima. Today we are going to continue our section of solving past questions on chemistry jam for the year 2016. Now, guys, how have you been doing? How have you been seeing our videos? I believe our videos have been very, very helpful in helping you tackle all those our questions or challenging questions you find not only in chemistry and also other subjects, other science subjects you um, you will find engaging with us in. And uh, that is, I'm actually referring to those that have been following us, those that have been seeing our what wonderful educational and entertaining content. Now, if you are among those that have not seen any of our videos, please browse through our channels. We have lots and lots of educational content that will always or that is available to what boost and improve your what academic what progress. Now, without wasting your time, we are going to go straight to the business of today, which is to solve jam pass questions on chemistry for the year 2016. And we are going to be looking at questions number 11 to 15. This is so because in the previous section, we treated questions number 6 to 10. Now, before we proceed, guys, do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, like our videos, use our comment section box for asking what questions. If you look below there, you see a notification bell. Hit our notification bell. Once your notification bell is activated, you'll be the first to be notified whenever we have an educational content like this on our channel. You can be kind enough to share our videos so that our videos are going to reach as much viewers as possible. So without wasting your time, let us go straight to the business of today. Question number 11 says, Z in the diagram above represents, Z in the diagram above represents, now if you look at this diagram, you can see Z here, you can see Y, you can see X, what does Z represent? And I'm going to label it here. You can see Y represents the activation energy. Z represents the heat of reaction. Very simple. So this is the activation energy. This is the word heat of reaction. You can see that this energy diagram represents an endothermic reaction. So your word Y is the activation energy and your Z is the word heat of reaction. So the correct answer there is heat of reaction. Very simple. You don't need to waste much time. Question number 12. The nucleus of an atom contains, the nucleus of an atom contains, is it protons only? Is it neutrons only? Is it protons and electrons? Is it protons and neutrons? Now, what relationship is the nucleus of an atom? That should bring back your mind in what? Mass number. Mass number. Mass number is the number of what? Protons and neutrons in the nucleus of an atom. The mass number is the number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus of an atom. So that tells you that the nucleus of an atom contains protons and the neutrons only. So those are the only two things that, uh, 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 that the nucleus of an atom contains. And because of this, the nucleus of an atom is responsible for the mass of the atom. It tells you how heavy an, the atom is because it contains what protons and neutrons only. So your correct answer there is protons and neutrons only. Very, very simple question. Very simple question number 13. Which of the following does not happen when a zinc rod is introduced into a solution of copper two sulfate? Which of the following does not happen when a zinc rod is introduced into a solution of copper two sulfate? Remember, I told you not happen. What doesn't happen when you dip a zinc rod in copper two sulfate? A. Is it that electrons flow towards the zinc rod? Is it that the zinc rod dissolves or dissolves? Is that the temperature of the solution changes? They are the blue color of the solution gradually disappear. They're asking you the work does not happen, does not happen. Let's see. Now we are going to take the options one after the other. This is option A, this is option B, this is option C, and this is for option D. Now analyzing them, let's see. Option A, electrons flow towards the zinc rod. Electron flows towards the zinc. That's false. What happens is that the zinc rod actually what loses electrons. The zinc rod actually what loses electrons and go into the solution as zinc ions. Are you following? Yeah. So electron flow towards the zinc rod that is false. Rather, zinc rod actually what loses electrons. So you've seen our answer. Our answer is already option A. Option A is not true. It is what false. It does not happen. Are you following? It does not happen. Now let's see the other options. The zinc rod dissolve. True. Option B says the zinc rod dissolve. That is true. After losing electrons, the zinc atoms go into solution as zinc ions. Option C, the temperature of the solution changes. That is true. 
there will be an increase in temperature of the solution as reaction takes place. That's the point. There will be an increase in solution of the temperature. There will be an increase in temperature of the solution as reaction takes place. Option D, the blue color of the solution gradually disappears. Yes, that is true. Now, this is because the zinc atoms go into the solution as zinc ions, while the copper ions leave the solution as copper atoms which become deposited on the zinc one. So what actually makes the solution to lose its blue color is because copper ions are leaving the solution as copper atoms. So your correct answer here is option A. Option A does not happen. Electron flow towards the zinc rod, that is what falls. Rather, the zinc rod actually loses electron. That means electron actually leaves the zinc rod and not moving towards the zinc rod. So our correct answer there is option A electron actually flows towards zinc rod this does not happen 14 which of the following statements is correct during electrolysis of a caustic soda solution using platinum electrodes which of the following statements is correct they are not asking us which one is correct during the electrolysis of caustic soda using platinum electrodes a is it that oxygen is given off at the cathode b is it that hydrogen is given off at the anode c is it that sodium is deposited at the cathode? D. Is it that alkalinity of the cathode increases? Now, what happens in the electrolysis of sodium um, caustic soda? Let us see. Now, electrolysis of caustic soda, that is NaOH in H2O, mm -hmm. dilutes caustic soda, NaOH in H2O. Sodium hydroxide, NaOH, which is a caustic soda, will dissociate into sodium ion and hydroxide ion. Water will dissociate into hydrogen ion and hydroxide ion. Now the cations present here are sodium and hydrogen ions and the only anions present here is what the hydroxide ion so now at the anode what happens anions will move to the anode what happens at the cathode cations will move to the cathode do you understand negative ions anions will move to the anode positive ions cations will move to the cathode now at the anode of course oh minus is the only anion is only negative ions so if you migrate to the anode and it will be deposited as oxygen gas. So let us see, they mentioned something as oxygen gas. They said oxygen is given off at the cathode. No, that is false. What happens is that oxygen is given off at the anode. OH- will migrate to the anode, not cathode, and be given off as oxygen gas. Mm -hmm. So OH- will migrate to the anode and be deposited as oxygen gas. So option A is false. Mm -hmm. So OH- is deposited at the anode as oxygen gas, not at the cathode. Now, at the cathode, what happens? Sodium and um, hydrogen and sodium ions will migrate to the cathode, where hydrogen will be preferentially discharged. So hydrogen will be discharged in, in preference of sodium. Why? Right? Because sodium ion is too reactive, it will remain in the solution. Why hydrogen that is less reactive will be preferentially discharged. So hydrogen ion is discharged at the cathode. We they mentioned something of hydrogen. Hydrogen is given off at the anode. That is false. So option A and B are both false. Hydrogen is given off at the cathode, not the anode. Mm -hmm. So hydrogen is given off at the cathode, not the anode. So options A and B are both false. Sodium is deposited at the cathode. False. Because sodium will never leave the solution. Mm -hmm. It will remain in the solution until all the hydrogen has completely been what, uh, discharged. So sodium here will remain in solution. So sodium will not remain at the sodium will not be displaced at the cathode. So option A, B, C are false. Now let us see option D. So hydrogen will be preferentially discharged, that's at the cathode. Now you know that the removal of hydrogen ions at the cathode causes alkalinity at the cathode, causes alkalinity at the cathode to increase. Why? Hydrogen ion is what makes a substance. To have a higher a lower ph value what do i mean hydrogen ions in a substance make a substance to behave like an acid so when you remove hydrogen ions that is responsible for an, a, a substance to behave as an acid then the alkalinity of the substance will increase do you understand the logic mm -hmm. now you're removing the hydrogen ions as you're removing the hydrogen ions that is responsible for that substance to be as an acid that means that substance is losing its ability to behave as, a, as an acid and in the other hand it is increasing its ability to behave as an alkali mm -hmm. or a base so because of that as, as the hydrogen ions are leaving the cathode 
that causes what alkalinity at the cathode to increase so the correct answer there is d alkalinity at the cathode will increase mm -hmm. 15. which of the following statement is incorrect which of the following statement is incorrect a fractional distillation of crude petroleum will give the following hydrocarbon fuels in order of increasing boiling point butane petrol kerosene okay let's see b this is 18 18 will serve as a monomer in the preparation of polyethylene. Both boot 1 in and boot 1 iron will decolorize bromine readily. D. Calcium carbide will react with water to form alkyne. Now let's analyze these four options and see which one is incorrect. A. Says fractional distillation of crude oil, which is crude petroleum, will give the following hydrocarbon fuels in the order of increasing boiling points. Yes, this is true. In the order of increasing boiling point, butane, which is part of petroleum gases, the petroleum gases include butane, methane, ethane, propane, they will come out first because they have the least boiling point, followed by kerosene, uh, and followed by petrol rather. After butane, that's the petroleum gases, butane, ethane, uh, propane, methane, the next one that will leave is petrol. After petrol, the next is kerosene. After kerosene, the next is diesel. After diesel, the next is what? Lubricating oil. So this arrangement in order of increasing boiling point is actually not true. It's true. So option A is true. We are looking for the one that is incorrect. So option A is correct. Option B. Ethene will serve as a monomer in the preparation of polyethene. You can see that's true. That's true. Ethene is the monomer for preparing polyethene. That is, we use ethene in the preparation of polyethene that is used in preparing plastic. So that's true. Option C, both boot one in and boot one iron will decolorize bromine readily. That is true. This is a test for unsaturation in hydrocarbons. Unsaturated hydrocarbons usually decolorize bromine uh, liquid or bromine vapor or maybe bromine water. Usually decolorize bromine water from brown to colorless. What are unsaturated hydrocarbons? Hydrocarbons that have double or triple bonds. Example are the alkene, alkenes rather. Example are the alkenes and the alkynes. Alkenes and the alkynes. Mm -hmm. So we have butene, ethene for the alkenes. But, um, ethene can do that. Propene can do that. But one in can do that. But two in can do that. Paint one in can do that and so on. And for the alkyne, uh, ethene can do that. Uh, propyne can do that, but one iron can do that, but two iron can do that. So, those double or triple bonds, which are the alkene and alkynes, decolorizes bromine water from brown color to colorless. So, that statement is true, and we refer that as what well, test for what unsaturated hydrocarbons or test for unsaturation in hydrocarbons. Calcium carbide, option D says calcium carbide will react with water to form alkyne. Sorry, I didn't give an equation for that. That is true. The point is that calcium carbide will react with what cold water to form what ethane. This is how ethane is prepared in the laboratory. And ethane is an alkyne. So in the laboratory preparation of ethane, laboratory preparation of ethane involves reaction of calcium carbide with cold water. So calcium carbide reacts with cold water to form what ethane. And that is how ethane is prepared in the laboratory. So option A, B, C, and D are correct. So we can see that this question has no answer. No correct option. All statements are true slash correct. So this question has no answer. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, we've come to the end of today's section of learning with prep class where we looked at past questions on jam chemistry for the year 2016. We solved questions number 11 to 15. I've dropped the link for you here bit.ly slash prep class whatsapp type this link on your browser and load it when you do so it's going to take you straight to our whatsapp group when you join us on whatsapp you're getting updates you're getting infos on the latest content we have on our videos see you in the next video i remain stochima bye